So good afternoon. Good, good afternoon, folks. Welcome to uh, Thorny Lee. I can just get your attention. Good afternoon, I'm Chris Cooney, and it's a pleasure to see you all here at Thorny Lee Golf Club. It's really uh, a delight, really, to see so many of you who I haven't seen uh, some in, in almost two years. Others longer, I see Sue Sakowitz is here, former principal of the Rockton High School. <clears throat> and other Athena Award recipients who you'll hear, former recipients who you'll hear about um, shortly. So most of our folks are here now. Uh, those that'll come in, just um, please make way for them and uh, we will get underway. So it's, it's great. Uh, we're delighted to return uh, to Thorny Lee, this exceptional facility, the day after the US Open uh, right, started. And uh, so it's kind of fitting to be here on the golf course uh, on a beautiful Friday. Um, this is for the 24th annual Athena Award program. It is an enjoyable, enjoyable time of year as we look forward to the beginning of summer, Father's Day on Sunday, and then Juneteenth on Monday. So for some of you, it's a three-day weekend. So we're looking forward to that, right? I want to acknowledge so many of our members and organizations who have a full table represented here today, especially our sponsors, Eastern Bank and Mass Hire Greater Brockton. Can we have a round of applause for them? Before we begin, please join me in a moment of silence in memory of past Athena Award recipients who are no longer with us. Uh, both Christine Caravides and Mary Ann Robel Cox are in our thoughts and our memories. Thank you very much. We encourage you to enjoy this wonderful lunch as we continue with the program. Uh, if you want seconds, go ahead on up. The buffet is, uh, is open. And uh, we, that way we will be able to feed you and continue with our program and get through uh, the program in time. Today we recognize inspiring leaders, specifically those who empower, elevate, and equip women to play a significant role in strengthening our community, our companies, and ultimately our future. According to recent data, the COVID pandemic has affected workers across the globe, but it has especially affected women in the workplace. Factors such as childcare, job loss, fewer women in leadership roles, and reduced access to business loans for many uh, young women entrepreneurs. Those gains uh, have been set back, and uh, the workplace prior, prior to the pandemic were actually slid back um, before 2019 on those numbers. In fact, according to McKinsey Global Institute, while women accounted for 39% of the pre-pandemic workforce, women experienced 54% of the job losses during that time. The report goes on to state that gender regressive effects could cost the United States more than $1 trillion in GDP by the year 2030. Um, however, on a, on a positive note, by addressing the most prominent issues facing women in the workforce, and especially women who haven't returned to the work, workforce, uh, women could return to the workforce and expand their roles, especially uh, in leadership. The numbers are very small in uh, Fortune 500 companies. Um, if they return, and they return in a positive way, and these, address, these issues are addressed, GDP in the United States alone could increase by $13 trillion over the next eight years. So you can see why, um, why this is an important uh, day today uh, to, as we celebrate women in leadership. I mention these numbers as a reminder of why we continue to celebrate this Athena Award uh, program and the leadership, especially the leadership that produces more leaders among women. Printed on this wonderful sculpture, in front of me uh, today is a simple and powerful quote from Greek philosopher Plato. And it's simple, what is honored in a country will be cultivated there. If we recognize it and we appreciate it, then we will try to achieve it. Despite the advancement of women in virtually all industries, there remains a relative few who advance to the highest levels of leadership. Today we are reminded just how important those who enable, encourage, and empower women really are uh, to our future uh, and future of women in our Economy. We are fortunate to have many strong women in leadership roles within this region. Uh, I would now like to introduce one of those women, uh, today's MC, Sue Joss. Sue is a former board chair of the Metro South Chamber of Commerce. Thanks for being on the floor. Sue is the 
former board chair of the Metro South Chamber of Commerce and is chief executive officer of the Brockton Neighborhood Health Center. Sue has led the Neighborhood Health Center for more than 25 years where she has grown this modern facility, actually multiple facilities now downtown, and a diverse staff of more than 650 employees. Sue is also a past Athena Award, so please join me in welcoming Sue. Thank you, Chris, and, and welcome everyone. Um, I wish you all happy Pride Month um, and honoring Juneteenth on Sunday. So um, an, another set of honors coming today in this, this month that already has some important recognitions to it. Um, I also want to say um, that this is probably the least strenuous thing I've had to do in the last two weeks. <laughs> Both of my sons are opening businesses this week. Um, one opened a store manager of a brand new Zoomies down in Dartmouth, and if you know what a Zoomies is, you must have teenagers. <laughs> um, and my other son, 20 minutes ago, opened an escape room in Rochester, New York. Um, and we were out there. Yeah. So. So new businesses are, are happening in, in the area, and um, I also, we, uh, my son contracted COVID during our opening um, last week out in Rochester, so my husband and I had to do all the work. <laughs> so it's really good to be here. Um, we have a really exciting program for you today. We'll be presenting an exceptional leader with the important Athena Award here. Um, and hear from another accomplished woman who is the CEO of Verdant Consulting, Dr. Al Alessandria Pelosi. Um, I'd also like to point out the, the green cards on your table, which I can't hold up as a sample because I don't have one, but Chris will. Um, the, <laughs> Dr. Alessandria will take a few questions at the end of the program if there's time. So um, please fill out the form with your question and a chamber staff person will uh, be by to pick it up during the program. Uh, before we begin, I'd like to recognize some of our great leaders in the audience. First, we have our ambassador team who assists chamber members through outreach and engagement. Please hold your applause until I've read the entire list. Ambassadors who have joined us today are Ambassador Chair from Eastern Bank, Joanne Schneider, Brenda Carnes, O'Colony Colony Elderly Service, Elder Services, uh, Richard Hook, SCU Credit Union, Joan Wine, Consultant, Felicita Sepulveda, Cape Verdean Association of Brockton, and also board member of the Brockton Neighborhood Health Center, um, Catherine Light, Envision Bank. Um, so a round of applause for our ambassadors. I'd also like to acknowledge chamber board members who are in attendance today. Rich Hines from Barber Corporation, Matt Hesketh, Good Samaritan Medical Center, Michael Lambert, Brockton Area Transit Authority, Jenny Mather, Jan Pet Resort, um, and myself. We also have some elected officials in the room prov providing their exemplary leadership and representing the community. I saw Senator Mike Brady. Um, Mayor Robert Sullivan is ill today and is represented by John Nasia. Brockton City Councilor Jack Lally. City Councilor Shirley Azak. Bridgewater Town Council President Sean George, and Stoughton Select Board Chair Deborah Roberts. So welcome all of you. At this time, I'd like to welcome Ms. Abby Wynn Burke, Senior Vice President and Team Leader for Women and Minority Business Enterprises at Eastern Bank. Eastern Bank is today's Athena Program Premier Sponsor Please welcome to the stage Abby Abby Winberg. to be 
one of your sponsors. The money is from Eastern Bank, not from me. Um, so I'm excited to tell you guys about the new program that uh, the bank is pioneering. It is uh, focused to support, elevate, and help grow in uh, women and minority-owned business enterprises. So I will be leading a team uh, to help focus on helping with uh, credit solutions, with uh, product bundling, with resources, tools, and um, really be able to be there to help these small businesses grow. And I know this gateway, beautiful gateway city, Brockton, we are here um, to help with all these small businesses. That's great. Uh, could you give us an example of how Eastern Bank, Bank is making a difference in creating a pathway to diversity, equity, and inclusion for your employees? Yes, that's a great question. Um, so I started at the bank 19 years ago, and so I'm a baby from this program. And so Eastern, we have a path, a road to equity, and all of our senior management is really intentional and making sure that they advocate for employees of diverse backgrounds. So I also co-chair our Asian American Professional Collective, and it is an option for all of our employees to really be there, have the exposure for all of our senior executives, have mentor programs, um, and be able to help each other advocate in a room just like this um, to help make sure that they have opportunity to grow and prosper. Um, we also, I know you guys mentioned very important Pride Month and Juneteenth, very, very important, but Eastern Bank, we just won the gold medal in the Dragon Boat race this past weekend as well. So we not only make sure that we push D&I internally, but also externally. Thank you. That's awesome. And could you talk about why it's important for Eastern Bank to sponsor important events like the Athena Award? Yes. It's really one reason. It aligns so much with our mission and our passion. Um, and it's evident, I know Chris had mentioned just throughout the pandemic, um, the workforce for women is really difficult, but Eastern has stepped up in our workforce. We have over 51% of women in positions above AVP, v, in above roles like AVP, VP, SVP, EVP, like me. Um, so we're very, very happy to support organizations like you in events like this. Well, thank you so much for all you're doing for the community and for sponsoring this event. Um, as a token, I appreciate you, of course, you get the famous chamber pen. Oh, thank you. So, awesome. thank you so much. Thank you. All right, and we also have another of our sponsors is Mass Hire, so a round of applause for, for that group as well. So Sheryl Sandberg, the Facebook, CEO of Facebook, um, said leadership is about making others better as a result of your presence and making sure that impact lasts in your absence. The main highlight of today's program is the Athena Award presentation. Since the Athena program's inception in 1982, more than 6,700 individuals from over 500 communities around the world have been selected for the prestigious Athena Award. Athena nominations are sought at the community level, and the award is presented to an individual, most often a woman, who has achieved the highest level of professional excellence, given back to the community, and most importantly, assisted other women along their respe respective career paths. Indeed, this focus on mentorship of other women is what sets the Athena Award apart from other leadership awards of its kind. I'd like to reiterate that the Athena program is not solely targeted to one gender and that both men and women are eligible to receive this award. It is through a representation of balanced leadership that communities will prosper and that of course involves everyone. Here with us in the audience today is Sheila Sullivan Jardim, CEO of Mass Hire Greater Brockton Workforce Board. Sheila is our most recent Athena Award recipient, receiving the award virtually via Zoom last year. She's also a supporting sponsor for today's program. Since 
Sheila did not have the benefit of our usual standing ovation um, for the Athena Award recipients because it was by Zoom. I'd like to ask everyone um, to join me in a round of applause for Sheila Sheldon. round of applause a year late, Sheila. Congratulations. It's also a pleasure to have with us several other past Athena Award recipients. Please give a wave when I read your name. Nancy Gustafson from the Charity Guild. Sharon Mulder, Brockton Public Schools. Janet Tress, who's usually running around everywhere um, from the VA hospital. <laughs> Elaine Reiser, retired from Brockton Area Multi-Services. <laughs> Sue Sakowitz, retired Brockton High School principal. <laughs> and me, Sue Joss, Brockton Neighborhood Health Center. <laughs> Today's honoree will, will be added to a long list of distinguished recipients, and she is a wonderful addition. Phyllis Ellis is currently serving in her third term as the president of the Brockton Area NAACP, the oldest, largest, strongest, and most effective civil rights organization in America. Phyllis received the Black Excellence on the Hill Award in 2019 at the State House after being nominated by State Representative Jerry Cassidy. She received the Sojourner, Sojourner Truth Award in 2020 from the historic Boston Equal Rights League, and the same year received the grand prize of $25,000 for the Myra Craft MVP Community Award. The funds for this award were given to Family and Community Resources who nominated her. Phyllis is chair of the Brockton NAACP's AXO Committee, a program for students aged 9 through 12 who can compete in more than 30 categories in STEM, humanities, business, and performing and visual arts. She is the producer of the, the NAACP Forum, aired on Channel 9. She is the chair of the Mayor's Community Justice Task Force and is the commissioner for the Plymouth County Commission on the Status of Women. Phyllis has served on the Board of Trustees at the Brockton Main Library and is a board member at Family and Community Resources. Now you would think all of that was her full-time job, but no, Phyllis is employed at K&L Gates LLP, a Boston law firm as a financial manager. She earned a BS in business education from North Carolina Central University and is a homeowner in Brockton. She has three children and six grandchildren. It is now my distinct honor to recognize the Metro South Chamber of Commerce 2022 Athena Award recipient. Please join me in welcoming Phyllis Ellis of the Brockton Double Area Double NAACP. Ooh, thank you so much. Good afternoon, everyone. I am so honored to be here today. I really am. I understand that the Athena Award is given out naturally. So to be in the company of all these women, outstanding women who have won this previously is I'm humbled. Thank you very much. I want to thank the Metro Chamber, Chris Coons at Eastern Bank for putting this on. But I'd also like to thank, a special thank you to the person who nominated me. I know who she is, you know. <laughs> for her to take time out of her busy schedule to nominate me uh, means really lot. This is Janet Trask. Janet Trask did it, so thank you. <laughs> I think, I think being nominated is an award in itself, but to actually claim the, the brand, the grand prize is still overwhelming to me. That means that someone in the community is paying attention to what you are doing, and that shows a lot. Um, the NACP is a civic organization, and the work I do is all voluntary, so what I'm doing is I'm doing because I want to do it, but to be recognized for that work is really great. So I understand that the uh, Athena Award is awarded to an exceptional <laughs> individual, okay, a person who looks out for the community. All right, I'll take all that. Thank you. <laughs> so thank you for thinking of me in this manner, and I graciously accept this award. Thank you very much. Phyllis, we're not done yet. Oh, we're not done? We're not done yet. 
So congratulations. Okay. All right, it says photos now. Oh, we're not done. Oh, Senator Brady. Okay, we'd like to bring Senator Brady and John oh. <laughs> and John Messia up. They have they have some surprises for you. I like. Right, congratulations. We have just a couple of small tokens of our appreciation for all you've done, Phyllis, and congratulations to all the other awardees and the past recipients. It's well deserved. So. First, I'm going to do one from the House, because all the money starts in the House, and then it gets to the Senate afterwards. So, oh, okay. <laughs> uh, Jerry Cassie, our great friend and representative, had a family commitment. He was here a few minutes ago, but he had to leave. But we have a citation from the House of Representatives, and it's to Phyllis Ellis in recognition of receiving a, the 24th Annual Athena Awards Leadership Award for your dedication and service to your community. This is signed by Speaker of the House, Ron Mariano, our great friend Jerry Cassie, the representative, and our friend Representative Michelle Dubois. So that's from the State House of Representatives, first of all. Okay, thank you. <laughs> and then we also have one from the State Senate, and I'm honored to present this from the State Senate. And this again is to Phyllis Ellis, in your great honor of receiving the 24th Annual Theater Leadership Award for your dedication and service to your community, presented by the Metro South Chamber of Commerce. And this one is signed by the President of the Senate, Karen Spoke, the Clerk, Michael Hill, and myself, Mike Brady. And again, congratulations. <laughs> Thank you. Well Thank you. Oh, wow. I can't care about this stuff. Thank, Thank you, Mike. You. Thank you. <laughs> and and if, I, if I may, I've got to give a shout out to Sue Dross as well while I'm here because. We, as you know, we couldn't come and assemble like we are today. We had a tough couple of years. We've lost family members to COVID and friends and so forth. And Sue Joss went above and beyond when, when there was differences of opinion from the administration of the Senate, where the vaccines are going to go, where the masks are going to go. She went right to the top. She went right to President Biden, got the masks down here in Brockton, got the vaccines in Brockton, and not only helped our Brockton constituents, but friends and all the other communities and thank God that the Shaw Center has been open and she's done a yeoman's work and I want to thank her for all she's done to help our Well, congratulations again. Thank you. Honor, honor well deserved. Thank you. Oh, and John Messina on behalf of the mayor who is <laughs> oh, wow. ill today. Yes. I'm sorry, Messina. Well, it's originally Messina, so you're right. I know. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, we're all uh, privileged here, Phyllis. So honestly, on behalf of the mayor, I'm humbled to stand here in front of everyone. I want to thank the past uh, recipients of the award for your tremendous efforts in the community and the city. Uh, I have the privilege to work with Phyllis uh, through COVID on the Health Equity Task Force. Wonderful. She, she works tireless hours to make this city a better city, and I applaud you for that. Thank you. Uh, official citation, be it known that the mayor of Brockton hereby extends his appreciation to Miss Phyllis Ellis in recognition of your distinguished service in the city of Brockton. Congratulations on being honored, and unfortunately, I need my glasses. <laughs> As an Athena Award recipient by the Metro South Chamber of Commerce. Therefore, it gives me great pleasure to present this citation to you as a symbol of my appreciation. This citation is duly signed by the Mayor of the City of Brockton on this day, the 17th of June, 2022, Robert F. Sullivan, Mayor of the City of Brockton. Well, thank you. Yeah. Congratulations, Phyllis, and thank you, Senator Brady and, and John Messia, on behalf of the mayor for the citations. Um, it's now my pleasure to welcome our speaker for this afternoon, Dr. Alessandria Polisi, CEO of Verdant Consulting owner of a 2022 workplace wellness hot list company and named a top 100 HR professional, Dr. Dr. L left her 20 year HR career following recovery from burnout and reactivated her consulting practice. 
Verdant Consulting focuses on implementing the latest scientific resiliency, burnout prevention, and psychological safety research to help people, teams, and organizations learn practical, simple skills that will help them flourish. With a cadre of diverse affiliates from around the globe, they offer training programs and organizational consulting services to address emotional well-being, change leadership, and organizational performance. Dr. Polisi is also co-founder of the Kite HR Wellbeing app for HR professionals and shares discoveries on all of these topics via the Be Verdant podcast. Please join me in welcoming Dr. Al Polisi. Take that. There it is. Thank you. Hi, everybody. This is fantastic. This is my first chamber meeting in person. Um, so I'm excited to be here. So we kind of teed this up. Well, first of all, before I start, thanks for inviting me um, for, to speak on this important topic. I'm so honored to be a part of a program that honors uh, the work of women. Um, I, as a women's studies major, um, I appreciate all the work that um, we do to create equity in the workplace. So I'm going to talk a little bit about some of the um, ways in which we've potentially been challenged in doing that um, through the last few years um, and give some guidance for businesses on how we can bounce back from uh, what we're calling the She Session. Um, as mentioned, our company offers uh, training on resiliency skills of building emotional agility and psychological safety um, to help organizations thrive. So we're here talking about the Athena Award, and I thought it might be interesting to learn a little bit about Athena and why that applies to the things we're talking about today. So Athena is known in mythology as the goddess of war. She's also the goddess of crafts and weaving. The uh, story is that she was challenged to a weaving competition by a mortal called Arachne, um, and she was so angered that she turned Arachne into, does everybody know? Spider, um, to weave forever. And she's also known as the goddess of wisdom. The other thing that Athena is well known for is the helper of heroes. How pertinent and poignant is that for everything we've been talking about today? Because we are filled in a room full of heroes. And so just as Athena helped care for um, heroes in mythology, I want to talk about how we can care for heroes in the work that we do. Is that okay? So let's talk about today's heroes. Many of the workers who were essential workers for the last few years work in predominantly female uh, industries. I personally was the head of HR for a veterinary hospital company, the fourth largest in the United States and experienced his 250 veterinary practices how to completely redefine how they connect with their clients and their patients. In addition, we had teachers who had to completely transition how they teach, had to put their own health at risk to connect with their children. We have mothers and parents who stayed home to help their children go through this transition. And as we know, the healthcare profession, especially our frontline workers such as nurses, and nursing facilities tend to be predominantly female. So it is very poignant that we can talk about helping our heroes. The fact of the matter is that 1.7 million jobs were lost for women throughout the pandemic. That is why we're calling this the She Session. As we return to work, however, we haven't seen the bounce back that we're looking for. Um, a third fewer mothers have returned to the workplace than fathers. In addition, this just came out actually, I literally got this study this morning, um, oh, and we didn't download it, so I'll tell it to you. Um, <laughs> uh, burnout has been at exponential levels, especially for women. A new study just came out that 68% of mothers are experiencing burnout, 43% of fathers. That's two-thirds more. So we have work to do in helping to create equity and help women bounce back from the stresses we've experienced and, quite frankly, the stresses that continue to face us in the future. 
So let's talk about some tips for how to bounce back. As I shared, and as was covered, thank you, Sue, in my introduction, our organization focuses on neuroscience and cognitive behavior theory to help people build skills. So everything we're going to talk about today is based on um, peer-reviewed research. So the first one is to focus on being a flex-first workplace. So what does that mean? When we think about the world of work, many times we think back to a very antiquated view of work. It's in person, it's looking over people's shoulders, it's monitoring activity versus output. It is where presenteeism can thrive, which is being present without being engaged. Women work workers will leave organizations that don't enable them to have flexibility. In fact, 51% of people looking for jobs today, women looking for jobs today, will pass on a position if it doesn't enable them to have the flexibility that they need. And so how can you implement flexibility in your workplace? Well, what I say is don't do this in a haphazard way. Think about what you want your culture to be, where you, what you want to stand for, and connect back to your values. If your values are to make an impact on the community, find ways to create flexibility so that people can um, engage in the community. Think about flexible workplaces, flexible work hours, flexible work outcomes, flexible work definitions. You don't necessarily, for example, need to have someone with the exact same industry experience that you're looking for. You can use things like assessments to assess the strengths of your potential hires, to find fits and cultural ads to your organization. So being flexible and redefining what work looks like for your organization is a great way for us to start bouncing back. The second one, and I see this a lot, um, being in HR, don't penalize people for having gaps in work. LinkedIn just added the ability to put in a work gap on your uh, work history. Taking care of your family, taking care of yourself, dealing with an illness, these are all legitimate reasons why people leave work. In fact, I would argue that someone who's leaving a gap to come work for you shows a higher level of commitment than someone who is just moving from job to job. So we have to get out of this mindset that there's something wrong with people who take care of themselves and take care of their families. Support family care needs. Now, when I say family care, I mean this in a holistic sense. We know that the child care industry has many problems, right? We can't serve all the needs that we have. In fact, the lack of child care has been some of the reasons why women haven't returned to the workplace. And so if you as employers look for ways to support the family needs of your workers, they're more engaged, they're less distracted, and they're more committed to your organization. Now, family care needs aren't just for having babies. Um, helping people build parental skills to manage the multiple stresses we experience as raising teenagers in what has been, uh, we recently saw the Surgeon General release a statement on the mental health crisis with youth. We as parents are having to deal with that. And many of us feel pretty ill-equipped to do so. Providing us with resources to be able to manage that will help our work and life be more productive. Obviously, I feel very strongly about proactively addressing well-being, but let me talk to you a little bit about what I see happening in organizations. Many people are overwhelmed with the mental health crisis we're experiencing in the United States. They're calling it the second pandemic. We're experiencing uh, mental health issues like we've never experienced before, and we often lack the resources to support people through their crises. What I would argue is that we can build skills that will help people navigate challenges based on science before they get to crisis. Offering mental health support when people are in crisis is absolutely necessary, but wouldn't it be great if people knew how to manage their stresses real time before it became a problem? <clears throat> the cost of mental health for us when I was the, C the CPO for a veterinary hospital company was our largest healthcare expense. If I'm in 
investing in the mental health of our workers, wouldn't it be great if I did it before they had to leave due to crisis? So proactively building the skills and capabilities, especially with your leadership, to navigate challenges, recognize burnout, and be able to monitor their own well-being will help you have a more productive work life. Finally, there's a new concept called a return ship. How many of you have heard of a return ship? Oh, all right, great. Um, I thought, oh, where's my choice? Okay. So just like, I mean, you've heard of an internship. Okay, so a returnship is a specific program that focuses on people who are looking to return to work. So you can create, um, just like you with an internship, specific projects. Maybe someone can only work one day a week. Maybe they can only do project work. Again, we're going back to that flex first mindset of breaking ourselves out of the confines we've had in a very antiquated workplace model. So by having return shifts, you can help people make the transition from having been home full time to working full time and do that in a creative way. And that doesn't necessarily mean they have to be in the office from eight to five. So return shifts help you think about how do I onboard and integrate people who are semi working, right? Who need to balance home and work in a creative way. Again, I wouldn't just stumble my way through this and react to requests. I would come up with a very strong strategy that moves you towards where you want to be in five years. What's the culture that you want to create? What do you want your organization to stand for? And how can you get there? All right, so those are my five tips for, work, for the uh, workplaces. But I want to talk to you, the heroes. We teach mental health uh, skills and tactics in our um, offerings. And so I want to share three of those with you today, if you'll indulge me. So the first one is showing yourself kindness. Practicing self-compassion has actually been scientifically proven to change how your brain processes information. It improves your overall mood. It improves your overall well-being. And it actually taps into your ability to connect with others. It hits that nurturing part of our brain and makes us better able to partner. So when you show yourself kindness by speaking to yourself like you would a loved one, which is something that many of us struggle to do, you can change not just how you show up, but how you show up for others. So spend today, just today, listening to how you talk to yourself and try to lean in on showing yourself kindness and withholding judgment. The second is to embrace curiosity. In some circles, I worked for a, a Silicon Valley company for eight years and we call this a beginner's mindset. Lean in on understanding your own personal needs and reactions. We have thoughts and feelings every day that we try to ignore, suppress, and we want to go away. By being curious and observing your thoughts and feelings, you're better able to bounce back and be more resilient in the workplace. So if that email from Fred really gets you going, pause and ask yourself why. And not just because Fred's a jerk. Okay, last one. <laughs> It's, uh, I know. I'm not. Um. <laughs> so last but not least, and this one's really important, find a way to create connection. It's fantastic that you're all here. Talk to someone you don't know. Get to know other people. Create a network for yourself where you can reach out to people when maybe you're feeling down, you're feeling overwhelmed, or you're struggling with a problem. Part of that connection includes connecting with yourself. Get to know what your strengths are and get to know where your opportunities are and embrace them. Recognize that you cannot be perfect and you can't be great at everything. No one can. And that's what makes you human. So creating that connection with other humans helps create balance in your life, balance in the workplace, and balance within yourself. Okay, so just like Athena, we are going to grab our new sword against the talent 
problem, the war on talent, and we're going to embrace addressing the she session head on. We're going to head into battle equipped with knowledge. We're going to weave together a culture that is vibrant and flourishing and embraces the strengths of each individual that recognizes we are all flawed humans, every single one of us. And we're walking around with brains that evolved for 200,000 years to keep us safe. Let's give ourselves a little bit of grace. And finally, we're going to build wisdom. And just like with the serenity prayer, we're going to have the wisdom to know the things that we can change and the things that we can't. And we're going to embrace what we can change and let go of what we can't. Because you are the hero in your story. And so you need to help yourself by giving yourself the grace and compassion that you deserve. Thank you guys so much. Thank you, Al. That was great. And we do have time for a few questions. And if anyone has more questions, the staff are wandering around to pick those up. Um, and oh, look, we have a pen. <laughs> One of the chamber thank you pens, so thank you for, for coming in. Um, so we have a, a couple of questions that were magically in my seat. And um, can you give us a few more details about your podcast? Sure. So um, my podcast is called the Be Verdant Podcast, and we focus on emotional well-being and resiliency and psychological safety in the workplace. Often we start with a scientific study, and then we bring in an expert from around the globe to talk about how that applies to stress in the workplace. So we look at, there's over 100 years worth of research on how stress shows up in the workplace. And again, as an HR executive, we quite frankly never talked about it. <laughs> and so I'm trying to raise awareness around that. Interestingly, right now, I'm in the middle of a, a series that is focusing on psychological safety around the world. So last year, this time, the International Standards Organization came out with global guidelines for psychological health and safety, which is part of your occupational health and safety. So just like you would look at bump caps and PPE for your workers to keep them physically safe. There are tactics that you can apply to keep them psychologically safe. And so that's something that we're working on right now. That was great, thanks. And are there also online resources? And I'm thinking that for many of the business owners and HR professionals that may be here, this is, this is a lot to take in and to think about how to start it. So online resources or any other thoughts about just how to get going? Well, obviously, one of my biases would be to talk to us. We can help you. And our programs are pre-approved for express grants, so we take advantage of that as well. But our website does have many resources. So we have um, an ROI calculator that you can put in your industry, how many employees you have, and you can see the cost of not investing in the emotional well-being of your, your staff. Um, we also have a lot of information around psychological safety, um, and understanding that as well. Um, we have webinars ongoing. We offer a lot of events. Um, so our website is verdantconsulting.net, um, and there's a lot of resources there. Perfect, thanks. We had to plug in there for you. <laughs> um, you just mentioned the Express Grant. What is that? Oh gosh, now I feel like I'm going to be tested because there's people here who actually know how to answer this question. But um, uh, so, but I'll do my best. Um, so the Express Grant is um, a rapid grant that um, is you have pre-approved vendors, and they have a list of vendors um, on something called Training Pro, and you can find the vendors that match what you are looking for. Um, if you have 100 or fewer employees, um, you can get 100% coverage up to $30,000 for training uh, for your employees. Um, and then if you have more than that, it's 50%. Um, it's a rapid, that's express process, so it takes three weeks to get approved because your vendors have already, like me, have already been pre-approved. And then you submit what you've paid and you're paid back reimbursed within about 30 days. So um, it's a pretty uh, painless process. I'll tell you the application takes me about four minutes. 
So it is very fast and it's a great way to build the capabilities that you need in your organization uh, relatively quickly. What did I miss? Okay. <laughs> we approve, right? Okay, great. So um, getting back to the flex first um, idea, what are your thoughts about how to implement that in an organization that may have some employees who could be flexible and work at home and others who really need to be face-to-face -face with clients? I mean, I think that you have to make that clear, right? Um, what roles need to be in person versus what, which ones can be remote. Um, but in both cases, I would measure against outcomes. And I would really challenge if that is in, in fact the case of needing to be in person. One of the reasons that you should really watch out for is, well, because I want to make sure they're doing the work. Um, that's just a lack of trust. You need to address that before you get people in the office. So, um, but having that open dialogue, the best thing you can do is be transparent about your, your guiding principles about what makes a job in person and what makes a job remote and having that be consistent. Great, thanks. Um, I don't have any more questions here, so it, do you want to say something to close us out? Um, absolutely. Well, one, thank you guys for coming to the event. Thank you so much for all the work that you do. Congratulations on the award and to all the previous winners. Um, the, the fact is that in business, we've been told for years that it's not personal, it's business. And the fact is, we just have the one brain, right? We don't have a work brain and the home brain. We have the one. And we are feeling creatures who also think. So the dysfunction is pretending that you don't have emotions. Emotions are not optional and you are not broken for having them. So understanding how to navigate them can help you bounce back more quickly as we continue to face challenges in the future. So thanks for that. Awesome. Thank you. Thank you for being here. And I will Thank you, Dr. Al. Thank you, that was just awesome. We have, uh, we'll close out with a few updates from the Chamber. Um, this coming Wednesday, June 22nd, is a business after hour sponsored by Luke Jackson Benefits and HR Solutions at the Children's Museum in Easton. That's from 5 to 7.30. The first 50 people will receive a special gift in honor of Restaurant Week, so register now and plan to attend. For more information on upcoming events, um, we always have the Chamber website, so please visit that metrosouthchamber.com. We do have table <coughs> giveaways and door prizes. Um, the door prizes, um, Eastern Bank's golf, golf ball and golf tees, four in total. Um, prize number one, Steve Lucha, at Abington Bank. <laughs> Prize number two, Anne Beauregard. Prize number three, Paula Martel from North Easton Machine. And prize number four, Brittany Fontaine, JM, JM Pet Resort. Congratulations, everyone, and you can see Chamber staff for those. Um, so, do we have a member profile winner? I'll skip that. <laughs> um, two table giveaways, you'll notice that center of each of your table is a bottle of wine and a sticker that indicates one lucky person who has won both the bottle of wine and an outdoor chair from our supporting sponsor, Mass Hire Greater Brockton Workforce. The person at each table with the closest birthday is the winner of both the wine and the chair. Um, please pick up your chair at the Mass Hire Expo table to your right. Um, so final thank yous um, today. Let's say today. Okay. That's closest birthday closest today. Thank you.
Church Morgan Photography, the Enterprise Newspaper, Brockton Community Access TV, the Metro South Chamber Ambassador Team, this afternoon's premier sponsor, Abby Wynn Burke from Eastern Bank, not her personal money. Uh, this afternoon's supporting sponsor, Sheila Sullivan McClellan of Mass Hire, the Greater Workforce Board, and Thorny Lee Golf Club. And let's have another standing round of applause for Phyllis Ellis, our 2022 Athena Award recipient. Thank you and have a great week.